Hello replay viewers, um, got some people coming in here, so I've got my little music playing in the background here. Um, showing you Crestron Processor here. How's it going? It's uh, Dustin with Pro AV School. Um, in my basement office you can see <laughs> see a bit of stuff there. Um, we're just going to wait for a few more people to pop on. I basically started, uh, started this idea of of helping people in uh, in the pro AV industry, so I started pro AV school. It was about three years ago now. Maybe it might have even been four. And it's kind of it's almost laid dormant for a while. I haven't really been pushing it, but now I've got kind of got a renewed focus of what's what's really my passion, and that's helping people and helping people advance to the next to the next level and learn new stuff. So again, I'm just going to keep. Uh, Keep the music chugging here for another few minutes. Maybe we can get some people on. Um, if you're on the broadcast, you can swipe to the right, and it'll actually invite other people. And maybe we can fill this up and have a bit of a discussion here. Uh, and it's just kind of short little midday sort of meeting here. I see. Uh, there's actually a couple people on. Where are you guys from? I wonder if it's real people here. I'm just gonna check my uh, check my Twitter feed here. I don't think a lot of people are uh, getting into this uh, Periscope thing yet, so it's kind of slow going, kind of getting the following and, and building up more people into my into my feed. You can also tap the little Periscope guy on the bottom there and bring it up, and you can click follow so you're notified whenever I go live. So I'm not sure if anybody else is gonna join us, but. Uh, I'm gonna stop my music here. So, thanks for thanks for joining the broadcast. My name is Dustin Berg. I'm creator of ProAVSchool.com, and also an independent uh, AV guy in Calgary. I do a lot of work for a lot of different companies, organizations, and mostly commercial stuff. Um, I've been in audiovisual for about 15 years. And I should I should probably check when when I started because now I keep saying 15 years and time keeps going on so it might even be longer now, but about 15 years and I kind of got my start with having to figure everything out myself and I didn't have a lot of people working with me that were showing me what was going on I was kind of in charge of my own department and in charge of me so I had to really figure things out and I think there's there's a real need to help people move forward so. Specifically, let's focus here on uh, programming, customer programming, and it's kind of the next level of audiovisual integration. It's kind of the, the glue that ties everything together. Now, first of all, I want to preface this by saying that programming is not definitely not for everybody, and there's people that, that are programming thinking. Let me rephrase that. There's people that have a programming type logical mind and there's people that don't and like I'm not suggesting that everybody should become a programmer that's that's definitely not a good idea um, if you've always sort of been interested in programming or dabbled in in stuff um, I've seen a lot of people as I worked through my career even had some of them working for me that were that were really interested in in computers and computer stuff but they went to work every day and all they did was install all they did was do installs and don't get me wrong there's nothing wrong with just doing installs so I'm just trying to adjust this camera it's not the greatest the lighting in here is not the greatest either I need to, to update some stuff but yeah I've seen guys where they're kinda of pigeonholed into this this thing where all they do is what they're known for so they're just they're just an installer or they're just a commissioning guy or they're just a service guy but they've never really been offered the opportunity to maybe be a programmer I mean this kind of applies to to other stuff too like maybe me move into management or move whatever um, specifically we're talking about programming here so I'm in a few uh, Facebook groups and people are constantly asking you know how do I get started with programming and there's kind of two two prevailing schools of thought um, there's people that feel that they're threatened by having new people come in and so they say you know you you have to go get trained you have to go go to Crescent not, not, not that that's not that that's wrong but they don't they're not interested in 
kind of encouraging people to become, oh, we just got somebody else new on, that's great. <laughs> it's uh, s small pickings here as I, I start my Periscope adventure. So uh, right now we're, we're pretty small, so I see every single person that comes on. I can't see who you are, but I can see that you had it. Joined, joined the broadcast here. So um, again, I'll flip a crest around. This is, a, this is an MP2E, kind of an older processor. I've got a couple of these kicking around, and I think um, at the end of all this... Uh, this discussion, not not today, but like a series of blog posts and stuff. I'm uh, thinking of giving one of these away to uh, to somebody who's interested in learning, mm -hmm. and I think this is a good place to start. Is you need to be a Crestron dealer to have access to the software. So there isn't really any way to get around that, and if if there is, I'm not promoting it because I think you you need to have the full support of Crestron to be able to work with their stuff because there's always firmware upgrades and software upgrades and you just you can't just kind of fly by the seat of your pants with this stuff it's it's just too there's too many moving parts i guess you could say so you have to be either a crestron dealer or a crestron dealer has to sponsor you through the training and there's kind of a few different levels i'm not sure how they have it broken down at this point in time but at one point there was sort of an introductory like level one a second level and a level three course and then you become certified. I think they've broken down the level one and they've added more courses kind of in between. And those are actually, you go to Crestron and they do a really good job. They have tons of locations and they'll train you pretty much anywhere, feed you well. I've been to, I've been to a lot of training myself and it's definitely worth the time. The gap that I'm trying to fill here is what happens when you're an installer working for an integration company and you want to learn programming but you there, nobody has time to send you they have to invest in taking you to the next level and a lot of times everybody's just focused on the job at hand and what's going on now and if, if you're in a company that's pretty pretty good or pretty I don't know busy I don't know if that's good or bad it's good to be busy as a company but that's successful and moving forward. They're do, they're, they've always got, I'm just trying to frame myself a little bit better here, they've always got projects on the go and usually there's not enough time to get the work done that needs to be get done so kind of career development for people just sort of doesn't happen the way it should and the way it could I guess you could say. Now there's two sides to this. One is you gotta show interest. As, as somebody that's kind of working through the ranks you need to be able to be invested in growing yourself and growing your own skill set because nobody's going to come along and push you to the next level that's aside from programming or anything nobody's going to to help you grow if you don't show interest in wanting to grow yourself so that's really critical and I think my pro AV school sort of takes into account people that like I'm trying to draw in people that are interested in improving themselves and they want to invest some time and possibly in the future when I have some courses they want to invest some money um, to kind of grow their grow their career and get better at what they're doing now I find that when I like what I do I'm happy my life is better if I go to work knowing that I'm making a difference and doing things that I enjoy doing and I know why I'm doing it and I know that I'm actually helping people so if if you're one of these people that's just kind of existing and you just go to work and hope to be paid more and hope to advance and hope to not have to work as hard you're probably hate to say it but you're probably not gonna really get there and you're always gonna be sort of miserable because you're not you're just not showing interest and people aren't gonna wanna promote you so that's not really what I'm talking about I'm talking about and sorry I kinda went in circles I, I need to I need to get myself a list or something or like write some stuff on my phone and hold it above my tablet so that I can have a teleprompter but um, I'm interested more in the people that they want to grow and they want to learn but there's nothing for them to really latch on to like say they don't even have a processor at the office that they can play with and nobody really wants to take the time to show them how to use the software um, the lowest barrier to entry is to get an account created and that's that's pretty easy. It's just an email. Your your hiring manager or your 
manager or whatever can, can do that pretty simply. But the act of showing you how to do stuff and sending you for a week on training is is an investment that they might not even be interested in making. They just they see you as what you do and they don't really have time to to train you. So there's companies like that and it's not that they're bad companies, they just they're not focused on growing individuals, they're focused on winning more deals and they're just they're they're focused on this stuff when really they should be focused more on developing their their people and building a good team. So there's not a lot of stuff I can do to help that situation, but I can help you kind of grow your career. So so what I want to do is start doing some videos of showing you how to go through sort of basic basic restaurant stuff and you know how to how to install it, how to you want know, you you tell me I guess what what you need to see and what what sort of things you're struggling with. I'd like to kind of be able to step through some basic stuff. And it's kind of the before you go to Crestron, Crestron. So if you can take take what I'm teaching, what I will eventually teach through the blog and through through I'm probably going to do some courses and through those you can you can take that and you can show show people, look, I've done this and I am interested in it and you know, send me out with the, with the programmer one day and I'll I'll see if I can help him troubleshoot uh, RS-232 devices or something or send me beforehand with with a processor and I'll test all the ports I don't know, I'll write a test test program to test, make sure everything's talking um, just little things that you can maybe start showing interest in and then that will get you to the point where you can go to Crestron and then then my stuff that I'm creating will be more of a, a reference and maybe we might get into some advanced stuff as well but really what my goal is is not to take away from what Crestron trains or even outside of, of programming I know that's the focus of this cast but even outside of programming my training isn't necessarily to take away from what the manufacturers are doing because they know their stuff and they're always going to give you the best and most relevant information it's more you know outside of that what else is there Where, what else can you know like if you're googling for an answer on on how to I don't know, change the size of your start menu on, on Windows. Well, there's tons of people that use Windows, and you'll probably find an answer. But if you're Googling trying to figure out why doesn't my touch panel communicate with my processor, it's it's a niche subject, and you're not, you're not going to find the answers that you need. And if you don't have anybody to ask, like, you can call tech support, but you'll feel like an idiot, maybe, um, if it's pretty basic stuff, and they... I've always had tech support be pretty supportive, but that being said, I've I've kind of tried to figure things out on my own, and I only call when I really have problems. So I want to create kind of these resources that it's kind of a go-to place to to look and see. So really, what I was hoping for on this cast, and it hasn't really happened unfortunately, but that's fine. I was hoping to get um, get some feedback from people on what kind of stuff that they need. What how can I help you? Kind of start doing some programming. Like what are the what are the barriers? And I don't know if anybody wants to comment. Uh, you can type type below and just leave a comment. It shows up on my screen, and I can respond to it. I haven't really seen any comments come through, so I'm going to assume probably not. But that's okay. Um, this will be archived, and it's just basically this is just a furtherance to my blog post that I did today on what I want to do and how I want to do it. And I need feedback on how to how to venture out in this area so that I can create the best resources for you. So, so that being said, um, before we go here, I might as well show you some some um, dual monitor setups. Pretty handy. Uh, the two main applications are Vision Tools Pro E, that's the touch panel design software, and then Simple Windows, which is all the the logic, and it's basically basically connecting on digital signals and digital logic and some of the stuff that I've learned myself in uh, electronics school was about digital circuitry and that's actually helped me quite a bit with programming so the most important thing is my little block here learn and never quit I never stop learning and I want you to never stop learning and I want to be able to show you as I'm learning stuff as I'm learning new stuff I want to be able to share that with you guys so if you're uh, you're liking what I'm what I'm sharing, please sure be sure to follow me at Pro AV School. 
or on the website proavschool.com. Um, again, you can click on the little guy in the corner here and click. Where is it there? Click, click on the little guy. I think they call him Perry or something for Periscope. Click on him and pop up, and you can follow me so that you're notified whenever I go live. And I'll also be posting these on YouTube. So, thanks for uh, for joining today, and hope you guys have a great day.